Well, of course, George's retired number hangs high above left field on the Royals Hall of Fame. But for the time being, he's going to hang out high above right field with us in the Blue Moon tap room as Matt Strom goes back to work and we misses inside. In, we should be in left field. You know that. The sun <laughs> because of the sun? beating in our face right now. <laughs> it's I mean, okay. that George, means we, you feel like you're on the golf course. Or you know, I, I feel like I should have put sunscreen to come to a baseball game at night. <laughs> Well, that means we're going to have to have good communication up here. If right. There's a ball up in the we sun, need, right? We need that uh, eight-pitch inning. That's right, which usually <laughs> right. always happens exactly. when you're up here. Watch so it. we better get to this quickly. But it's a nice right. view, isn't it? It's beautiful up here. You know, I've never been up here. I've been up here before games and stuff, but never during a game. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it really is. I, you know, if you're a, let's say you're a football fan that really likes to see the whole field and how the, the defense moves and how plays develop, this would be a good spot from a baseball standpoint. I mean, you can really see the, the spacing yeah. from a different angle that you're used to seeing. But when I go to a football game, I don't like to sit low. You I like to sit high. Okay. I like to sit high. You see the plays develop. Well, you see everything open up, right, don't right, you? Right, right, Yeah. When I go to the KU game or the Chiefs game, I always want to sit high. Jackie Bradley Jr. takes a leadoff walk against Matt Strom. Well, I don't know what the rules are in live sports on cable about drinking a cold beverage on camera but let's just say you have a nice cold blue moon in front of you so how do you like blue moon beer I like it okay I really do I got ice in it because it's so hot <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it would be a warm blue moon right now <laughs> but I put a little ice in mine tonight uh, yeah we don't normally drink beer in Dayton sweet during the game so when I came out here and the gal said some got nice lady said, hey, can I buy you a drink? I said, sure, why not? <laughs> so I got a little beer going right now. It's only about 100. Yeah, it's only 100. We're, we're good. I we're take good. a sip, I feel it coming out of my forehead yeah, yeah. immediately. Hey, George. But what? this is a great area up here. That's, what does it seat, 100, 200 people? 100 to 200 people. I mean, it's it's great for, you, know, you could have a family reunion up here. You could have a company outing. Yeah. Just get a bunch of buddies, come on up here. And how about food and soft drinks are included? With the rental cost, that's where well, that's why you bring your kids, right? Too. Yeah, I don't think beers are included, just the soft no. drinks, right? No, right. But uh, you can see the the railing all around here, so you could bring your kids. I mean, they've got yeah. nowhere to go. I mean, you could, you would have to watch them every five seconds if you're up here. Well, you know, the whole stadium is so different from when it was when I played here from '73 to '93 because you got all this outfield entertainment. They got suites everywhere. They got, I mean, all kinds of stuff out here that they didn't have. Uh, before if you hit a home run and it, you saw it hit the green grass the grassy knoll we used to call it mm -hmm. you knew it was a long one if you saw the ball land now people actually get a chance to pick them up and get, grab them and see balls go in the water fountain George and you're there's so many suites out here that are available and, and uh, for those of you that have never enjoyed uh, you know coming out here and sitting in those suites over there by the Hall of Fame club or the dugout suites I mean it's really a fun deal. I get invited to go once in a while by the Royals to go visit some people in the suite. And I always do it, and it's just amazing how much fun they really have. So. Yeah. Of course, were there, were there goats in the outfield when you were here? No, they had, the goats were gone. Okay. Charlie Finley sold the team. Okay. He was gone. Ewing Kaufman didn't like goats. Fizz, <laughs> Fizz has some good stories about those. <laughs> One and two on Sam Travis. George, what's it going to take for Strom to survive as a starter? I think just keep doing what he's doing. He's going to get a little better every time out. You know? I remember when he was in the minor leagues, I remember Bill Fisher telling me one time, this guy reminds him of Chris Sales. Mm -hmm. You know, when Chris Sales was young. Mm -hmm. Lefty, kind of three-quarter three uh, delivery. Um, pretty good command, and he's just going to get better and better. And I just think if we leave him as a starter, he's going to do just fine. I mean, I thought he did an outstanding job his first time out against the Angels. Wasn't it against the Angels? Was against the Angels. Yeah. He gave up an unearned run in the first inning, and then that was it. Over right. the next uh, four innings, he was right. completely scoreless. Mm -hmm. And I would think, you know, you being a left-hand hitter, these that, are the type a, of guys you don't want. Yeah, face. that's a tough angle. Yeah. Guys throwing from that three-quarter arm slot with good velocity and a good breaking ball. It's hard to really keep your hips and shoulder. On those that's guys, right. You know. Who is the toughest really lefty hard. like that at your day? Well, Randy Johnson. I always say Randy Johnson. Okay. And a guy that didn't really throw like Randy Johnson uh, way before Randy's era. I faced Randy, you know, when he came over to Seattle. Uh, he didn't have that great control yet, you know. So he was still conveniently wild. Mm -hmm. And and um, 
And uh, so you really never really felt comfortable going in there and facing him. And Hal McRae was my manager, and I was 39 years old. And Hal said, George, after watching me face him one time, he said, you'll never face him again, I promise. <laughs> I'm always going to give you a day off when he pitches. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, one day, we're losing two games, or two to one, in the bottom of the eighth inning in Seattle, in the old kingdom. Hal comes up to me and he says, you know, if the score stays the same, you're going to pinch hit with two outs in the ninth. Buddy Biancolano was hitting coming up third. So sure enough, it's two to one, top of the ninth. First guy makes an out, second guy makes an out, and I got a pinch hit against him. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, put it this way, I, I, all I did was walk out of the dugout, I swung three or four times, fouled one off, I flew out to right field, I came back in the dugout, and I was dripping sweat like I just played nine innings yeah. in this heat. <laughs> you know, you know you because gotta, you were grinding so bad, yeah. you, you know. You got a hit off him, though. You're a one for 11. Did I? Yeah, five strikeouts is all. That's good. No, that's not bad. No, he's filthy. Not bad. He's tough on right. But, but I'll tell you who was really, really good. I, and people ask me this all the time: who was the toughest guy you ever faced? I always say Ron Guidry. That year, I think he was 27 and three, right? With a one something ERA. I mean, that was 1980 or 79 or 80 or 81. It was that was as good a stuff as I've ever seen. Well, you weren't the only guy who probably said Ron Guidry was a handful. Right. Yeah, but you hit 321 off a of Gator. How do you know all this? Five homers. How do you know that? We did our homework. We knew you were coming for a week. <laughs> did you know I was going to say those two names? Yeah. How did I do off Tommy John? We do. Tommy John. Ooh, <laughs> Come he, on. He, soft he was tosser. nasty too. I know, but he was, he was a flipper. He, he was a Vargas. Exactly. You know, those and that's are the hardest the guys to face. I yeah. keep telling our audience. I guarantee that, you one thing: I had a higher batting average off Ron Guidry than I did off Tommy John or or all those soft toss and lefties like that. Right. Those guys, those guys drive you crazy. Yeah, you talked about your shoulder. But, but George, your Charlie Lyle theory, you were closed off, weren't you, with your stance? Well, sometimes I was closed, sometimes I was open. I was always making little adjustments. Always tried to make a little adjustment, depending on who was pitching, how I was swinging. If I was hooking the ball too much, I'd close up and concentrate on hitting the ball the other way. If I was hitting too many balls to left field that I thought I should be pulling, I'd open up a little bit and just try to be a little quicker in. So more, well, that's always making an adjustment. Okay, more adjustments with your hands and upper body or your feet, your toe hole, where you sit. I would, say, I would say my feet, which, which kind of gave me a direction of where I was going to try to hit, hit the ball. You hit 234 off of TJ. See? Yeah. Who had better stuff? Who would you rather have on your team, Tommy John, Tommy John or Ron Guidry? Gator slider was nasty. Yeah, it was nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going with Gator. So what are I'll we thinking? Stuff. What are we thinking about the team? You liking it? Well, I will confess that the first month of the season, when people would shaky. Ask, well, I thought, you know, there's just something missing. And well, now you know they're what, playing you, like they did in 14 thought, and 15. Yeah, exactly. Do you, do you know what I thought was missing? I thought we had four guys that knew they were free agents. Which, you and, know, and, and they're going to go, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a lot of money next year rather than putting their own performance aside and saying, I'm going to go out and help this team win. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they were all doing so bad. They said, I'm just going to help the team win and everybody's doing better. That's all on the same end of the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And George, I saw the same thing. But now you that, know they're only human and they're all sure. reading about the new power we're supposed to have right. and more homers well, and that this was year. that was the biggest kiss of death right in spring training when they said we're going to hit a lot more home runs so I'm going uh oh that's not good right and because I've said this so many times to you uh, to both of you guys you know if you, home runs come as a result of a good swing home runs don't come from swinging really hard right they come from a result of having a good swing and when you're thinking about hitting a home run you don't put a good swing on tell the tell the story that that you would say to the minor leaguers all the time about the year when you tried to hit home runs and well I never really tried because Charlie had an etched in my brain that if you hit it hard it will go far right but that's that's my big thing about hitting if you try to hit something far and I play a lot of golf every time I try to get on a par five and two oh I got to hit a good drive I hit a terrible drive mm -hmm. Uh, if I just try to hit the ball hard, sure enough, I can maybe get there in two. But I know every time I swing really hard at a golf ball, I don't hit it very good. Mm -hmm. But if I just try to be quick and through, I hit it hard, it will go far. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the big deal. That when you really mature as a hitter, you never try to hit a home run. All you try to do is hit it hard. And when you do, do you swing 70 percent? I swing 90? 80. I swing 80. 80. I practice at 70. Okay. I practice at 70 and probably swung 85 to 90. Thank but I you. never swung 100. Okay. That's never that. swung 100. I like to use that analogy yeah. uh, because you, when you swing easier or try easier, usually you get better sure. results. Mm -hmm. and that's one of the things in pressure that Charlie Lau taught, told me uh, when I was very, very young coming up in the major leagues. Game on the line. Don't try harder. Try easier.
Because if you try harder, you get that tension. You know, you get that tension. George, that's why I was a bench player. I was always too tight. You had that tight. tension. I well, you were wound. You're wound that way. Everything you do, you're like I that, was more. I was more of a football player. Yeah. In a you baseball had the player's football body. mentality. But, but Steinbrenner's money was so much greater than the, the Dan Devine's uh, scholarship. <laughs> yeah. I had to take it. Uh-huh. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. George, I If think you had to do it over, would you do the same thing? Absolutely. I yeah. learned more about myself and how to handle failure than I did I think this whatever is the in longest football. inning I've ever been on with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being around the cage in spring training and I don't remember the specifics, but you were talking to a guy who's in his first big league camp and you said, Hey, how many home runs did you hit last year? Yeah. He says, I hit twenty. How many at bats? Four hundred. Let me ask you a question. How many times did you go up to the plate trying to hit a home run? He goes, I don't know, probably like 350 times. Yeah. How, and many? how many did you hit? None. Two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you hit two for out of 350. 350, and you're 18 for 18, not trying. Right. How many are you going to hit this year? I remember seeing yeah. the look. I don't remember who it was. I wish I right. knew who it was, but the look on his face was like, I right. never thought about that yeah. before. <laughs> hey, does Moose have a chance to break Balboni's home? Yeah, I record? think he does. Okay. I think he does. Moose has looked as good. He hasn't really gone in slump all year. No. And in he's and, been the same. Yeah. Since uh, day one. You know, every once in a while, I, in my opinion, he gets a little too pull conscious. Right. And and he'll do that for two or three games, and then the next day you'll see him shoot a couple to left. You know why? And then all of a sudden, last night, he drops down yeah, a bunt. He, he told me when he wants to go to left, he can. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he's you mature. Know why? He's a much you know more why? mature hitter. Oh, he, a lot more than oh. he was two or three years ago. Oh. You could have put nine guys on this side of the field, and he said, "I'm going to get a hit. I'll show them." <laughs> right. Thanks, George. That okay, went about guys. 10 minutes longer than it normally does. That's all right. Thanks. That's all right. But come out and enjoy the suites. It's a wonderful area out here. Right.